Okay, this is episode two of Used Game Reviews. And this is the, when I went to GameStop and I bought two used games, this was the other two. The, the other one. The first one, of course, Frontlines, which I liked. Gave a very positive review on this one, however, it's Evil Twin Sister, our brother. Sister. Uh, Black Sight Area 51. Now, I am a huge fan of the Area 51 franchise. I remember the, uh, the original arcade game was everywhere when I was growing up. I went to the movies, it was there. We had a ton of arcades around here, and it was always in the arcades. It was even in like the pizza shops around here. So, huge fan of the Area 51 franchise. The, the Site 4 sequel I played, and I, I picked up the game for the Xbox. And I've been meaning to pick this up for a long time. So I was quite excited. I had a lot of high hopes for this game, and completely disappointed. Even though I only spent 10 bucks for it, I was still very disappointed in this game. Uh, I do not recommend this. In fact, I'm going to say don't buy it. If you're a huge fan of the Area 51 franchise, you've probably already picked it up. You might still want to pick it up just if you want to complete the collection, but you'll probably be disappointed by this game. It's not a real Area 51 game. It seems like it was a a uh, completely separate project, and they decided to just slap on the Area 51 uh, name onto it. They should have just called it Black Sight and left it at that, and then it would have been it would have been mediocre, and there still would have been problems. Uh, the gameplay it's it's a little rough. The handle and a lot of the enemies take way more hits than they should. I mean, especially like the first level, you're not fighting aliens or giant monsters or anything. You're fighting Iraqi militia, and the Iraqi militia, you're like unloading a half a clip on these guys to make them to, to, to kill them. That should not be the case. Uh, and there, and there was also some real laziness with uh, setting up this stuff. Uh, perfect example. Apparently, they only made like two big uh, heavy weapons uh, models that you know the static background. One's an M1 tank, and the other is a, a BTR-60, which is a Russian APC. And you see them in Iraq, okay. You go down to the secret Iraqi bunker, and you start seeing M1 tanks. And At first, I bought that as, okay, they're trying to show that the Iraqis are hiding all these big things. But later on, I see the BTRs in, uh, in America as the uh, American uh, APCs. So it was obvious that the designers were just very lazy, and they didn't bother creating a new background set. And, it, and I think that's kind of just showing how this was probably a rushed. It wasn't very well polished. Uh, there's a big, serious lack of uh, variety of enemies in a single-player campaign. Uh, you basically have uh, the Reborn, which are these... Uh, basically, they took illegal immigrants, criminals, and homeless people, and you know, through science, turned them into soldiers who rebelled against the government whatever and th there's them and there's supposed to be a couple varieties of them but you don't notice them they don't fight differently and it's very hard to even tell on their character models they look basically all the same there's them there's a scout version of them which is one that you see always advertised on the front cover and through everything else it's like the giant leg leg monster or with you know the monster with the giant legs which is kinda cool there's these little like kinda swarm enemies and there's these like, you know, basically graboids that pop out of the ground. You gotta get, destroy and like, two, what? Basically two, maybe three, uh, big boss enemies. That's it. That's it. You basically go out to have five, five types, five enemy types. That's it. Not very impressive. Oh, do we want to include the Iraqi militiamen from the start? <laughs> That's about it. Like I said, it not a lot, and they don't look very alien-like. I mean, in the last Area 51 game on the Xbox, they had, you know, the mutants, and like at least the super soldiers, they looked alien. They, had, they were all black, but they had the gro glowing neon spots. They looked kind of cool. Not so much with this one. They're just kind of wearing army uniforms with slightly looking near-future stuff on. Unimpressed visually. Uh... Very boring color palette too on the game. You know, it's just deserty. There's maybe a little bit of variety with the one mission at night in the town, but 
not a whole lot. Uh, story is somewhat just funny to watch because it's like it's a very bad, poorly done conspiracy theory plot that you can kind of tell all the twists and turns that are going to happen. But you know, here's the other thing: Area 51 for for a game called Area Black Sight Area 51. There's one level that takes place in Area 51. The rest all take place in the desert outside of Area 51 and the towns outside of Area 51. You basically get to Area 51 and it's this regular military base except for this big dome. I don't know why they decided... Apparently, you know, they, they constructed this army of soldiers and they rebuilt. So they built a giant dome around the facility that they housed them in to, to contain the, the rebellions. Why they just didn't blow up the facility... Uh, it seemed to have been an easier way of putting a cap on the uh, rebellion instead of building a giant ass doom that probably took months and months to build while these guys were, rebe were rebelling instead of just blowing them up. Uh, that seemed like a much more plausible solution to the problem since they were willing to kill these guys. I don't know. I don't question it. That's that's why I, I can't I can't complain about plot holes in a video game really. Especially if it's not an RPG or it's taking its story. Although that's the problem. It it does try to take its story very seriously. So that's why I kind of catches on my nerves a bit. You know, I I I can mind very, you know, Swiss cheese plots if they if the move if the game kind of winks at you and goes, we're not taking this serious at all. Uh, but here's the other big problem with this game, and it has a completely dead multiplayer community. I mean completely dead. I've been trying and trying and trying. I cannot find a single game on the multiplayer. I'm playing on Xbox Live. Maybe, I believe this came out for the PS3 and PC as well. Maybe it's a little bit more active there. I can't say. But Xbox Live-wise, it's dead. Dead, 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 dead. I have yet to play a game on multiplayer. And here's the sad thing. Uh, the achievements, for the multiplayer achievements... Very achievable. You could you could probably easily rack up a thousand achievement points in a day uh, with multiplayer achievements. Normally, it's very hard to get the mul normally multiplayer. I hate normally I hate multiplayer achievements because they require you to put so much time and effort into the multiplayer game, and a lot of times they're just you know almost you know very hard to get. your are just plain lucky when you get one. Uh, a lot of times it's a lot harder winning a hundred rounds of a death match than they say, because it winds up establishing that there's like 10% of players who just always win the matches, and nobody else will ever be able to win. These 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 achievements didn't seem to be like that. There was only one or two. So I was really hoping to play this, get some achievement points. It's very easy, because they seem to you know, play this mode in multiplayer, play that mode in multiplayer, play all modes in multiplayer, and you get achievement points. But completely dead, never had a chance to play a single uh, game online. Oh well, oh well. Uh, so I do not recommend this. Obviously, if you're if you're into multiplayer, this is a complete stay away. It is even though it's only ten bucks, it's just, you might as well just burn the ten dollar bill because you're not going to be playing any multiplayer at all. I mean, not ever. Uh, if you're buying it from the multiplayer experience. It is only ten bucks. It might be it might be dropping even more now, but still, it, I mean, if you if you just want to get some achievements real quick, I suppose you can. It didn't take me that long to play through the campaign, and I mean, I I played through the entire campaign, so it didn't it wasn't so bad that it bored me out and made me stop playing, like some games have. But it's not a recommend. I'm not saying. If you just want to play, a f you know, if you need to have, if you have a first-person shooter fix and you need it, or you have a first-person shooter itch and you really need it fixed, you can maybe spend the ten bucks here. Though there's definitely better games out there for the same price at this point, so go with them. And like I said, multiplayer, oh, you know, you know. Buy a, buy some sodas with the ten dollars. <laughs> uh, that's it for now. Signing off.